Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Beacon in the Dark. Uh, yes, this is uh, continuing much to everyone's disappointment, I'm sure. Uh, but before we get into what happened last time and um, all that good stuff, I would like to ask our players to briefly introduce themselves and their characters. I roll the dice in the background. The dice say apparently we are going reverse alphabetical, meaning that Zelrin should go ahead and introduce herself and her character first. Now before she does, I should also mention we are recording uh, on Zelrin's birthday, which was last week for all of you, December 16th, 16th of December, however you want to call it. So happy, happy birthday Zelrin, uh, you're a lovely person and we are very, very happy to have you with us. Thank you. So could you please uh, introduce yourself and your character? Mm -hmm. My name is Zarin, and I play um, Larry Ambassaro once again after after a, a long break. And as you can see, some stuff has changed since last time. Um, I renamed some of my stunts. Um, Wicked Ways is now Fiendish Aura, and I've re removed some old stunts, and I've got some new ones. I have um, Visionary, which is once per session I can use my Corruptive Influence to alter the perception and senses of a target. Beacon in the Dark, I gain plus two Sneaky when attempting to attack with techniques using Void Spell, um, including Void Blank, obviously. And Judgment, which is once per session I can strike through an enemy's defenses, causing massive damage. And I also have... Um, one plus in my sneaky and one plus in my quick since last time. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, I mm -hmm. forgot that that there was there was step both since Larry was last on the team mm -hmm. because the other players reached some milestones in the meantime, so uh, Larry had to catch up a little. Um, I still <laughs> find it funny that you have a a negative stat. Like I think you're the only player character I've ever seen with that. It's impressive. Unique, very much so. Um, but yeah, thank you very, very much, Zarin, for introducing yourself and your character. Next, according to the dice, we would have Sir Farmshire. Farmshire, could you please introduce yourself and your character? Going once? Going twice? Farmshire? Oh, sorry. First of all, keep forgetting. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, as always, I'll be playing the amazing Benjamin Aaron. Salsword and all that stuff. He's on a ship. It's very crowded. It's not very fun. And, uh, yeah, lots of adventures ahead. Probably some murdering of our enemies. You know, the usual. As you do. As you do. Thank you very, very much, Famshar. Uh, next, according to the dice, we would have former question mark captain bladebeard could you please introduce yourself and your character yeah sure i am a doom goblin and i play captain bladebeard uh a dwarf pirate mm -hmm. yes that you do that you do thank you very very much for introducing yourself next we would have banarak banarak could you please introduce yourself and your character uh, yes, hello. I am good old Benarak playing good old Captain not Bladebeard. Why would I say that? Captain mm -hmm. uh, Moarg or Bud. And uh, yeah, he is a, uh, I guess, full fledged captain now that he has all of these ogres on this ship. Captain and chieftain. Yeah, I, I, he's got two titles then. Yeah, yeah. Chief captain. Well, it's entirely up to you how you call yourself. Um, but yeah, thank you very, very much for introducing yourself, uh, Banarak. Uh, now, Zorin, since it is your birthday, uh, you have the privilege of potentially making someone miserable or just using the, doing the usual with our recap, aka you can appoint who reads it or just leave it to the dice. What say you, Zorin? Zorin. Tom Shire. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's very rude. Sorry. Uh, yeah. 
The escape from Lapidus also brought about great changes for our heroes. In the midst of their flight, as the liberated fire elemental continued unleashing lava at the fleeing Black Rin, the party was suddenly picked up by another elemental imprisoned within Lapidus, the Jin Hazu, the All Seeing. The mischievous entity brought our heroes, along with Sin Liri Embersaro, to his tower in the middle of the Great Sea where he promised them aid in exchange for answering his questions. As our heroes gave answers, and discussed and debated their actions and plans, Hazu made an offer, Liri and Miro could swap places, with the Volpera going to Pandaria, and the Blood Elf rejoining the crew. Much to Miro's confusion and dismay, the heroes agreed to this exchange. Once returned to the Black Rin, the party found that the ship had escaped the attack of the Fire Elemental, thanks to Hazu and that Tar, of the Dark Rock tribe of Lapidus, had taken charge. The deceitful Hogar, however, quickly proved to be an incapable leader, and so was challenged and easily defeated by Captain Moarg, who thus became the chieftain of the Dark Rocks and captain of the Black Rin. Our heroes resolved to chase the good fortune and rescue Captain Bladebeard's mother. On the way, Bug, Bladebeard's SKP, escape artist friend, stole Liri's box of heirlooms from her father, and used some of the blood thistle found inside, though the blood elf quickly recovered it. Benjamin Aaron also briefly communed with the Archmage Meridia, who was on trial at Dalaran. Soon, aided by the favorable winds summoned by Hazu, the Black Rain found the good fortune moored at a rock in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by dense mists. Thank you very, very much, Palmshire, for reading the recap. So, uh... Astute viewers, you might have noticed uh, that there, that uh, the screen is very, very slightly different while we were doing our recap. Namely, you will see that I made little squares for uh, ship uh, positions, I suppose you would call them, uh, where I think either Doom Goblin or Banrak are uh, pinged, because they're both green, so I can't tell which is which. Um, basically, whomever you appoint... Thank you, Zelrin. Thank you, the other green person. Um, whomever you appoint to this position, these positions will afford certain bonuses and or malices. Um, basically, it's my way of sort of gamifying the fact that you have a ship. Like, I wanted to actually have a bit of an impact on game mechanics as well, not just the story, if that makes sense. Sort of to reward you-ish. Um, I would encourage you all to have this discussion of who should be appointed to which ship position like now at the beginning of the session uh, before um, like you encounter the good fortune that you see on screen and whatever whatever else may happen because whomever you appoint to these positions again will impact how the ship itself does and the ship is again a bit separate from uh, you guys the players now to briefly tally up what bonuses and malices you do have so far, because you do have one person in a position already because you appointed her last session, uh, Vera is a very, very good security chief. Um, obviously, you can fire her if you want, but that's up to you guys. Uh, so she will provide a plus two to the loyalty of the crew. Uh, a bit of a spoiler alert, the ogres were already loyal, so that's a bit wasted, but some of the other people weren't necessarily loyal, so... Uh, that works in that regard. Um, also, because of the fact that the vast majority of your crew is comprised of ogres, like there's 50 to 60 ogres and like 10 to 15 other people, so I consider it an ogre crew, the ogres will provide a minus 2 to the ship's quick, but will provide a plus 2 whenever melee combat is involved. And also, ogres are much easier to keep loyal than a lot of other crew types. Now, Again, I would invite you all to discuss among yourselves who you, whom you'd like to appoint to what position, including yourselves, like you can appoint Leary to be the first mate, for instance, or whatever else. Uh, I do have some stats pre-prepared for like how each of you would do in each position, but we, we can discuss that to, to like say, no, actually, I think my character would be better than what you established DM in this position, or maybe they would be worse. Um, I have a question. Yes. If we appoint someone to something and then we unappoint them, does that make them mad? Probably. Well, depends. Okay. On, it also depends on the person. Gurren will not mind, for instance. Okay, so we should be careful about who we appoint. 
Also, I would invite you, um, I'm not going to reveal which of these like crew members is good at what, um, but you can ask me like, Zerin, you can ask me, hey, would Liri make for a good gunner, for instance? And we can discuss that um, or mm -hmm. all that. Um, so I would invite you to either to like talk to the crew members, like sort of interview them for the job, so to say, or just roll careful to like determine would this person make for a good such and such, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, do you guys have any questions? I don't think so. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, one thing I should mention, uh, because Moarg is the captain, uh, you all, I highly encourage you to, to discuss it among all of you, like to reach consensus, but I would say that Moarg will have the final say as he is the captain of this ship. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Are we going to discuss slotting anyone in right now? I would encourage you to because you are nearing an encounter with the good fortune. So mm -hmm. you'll need, like, I would encourage you to. But it's entirely up to you. Uh, okay, idea. Maybe we should um, use the, the Naga as the magic person. Uh, I think Chef Klang would be a magic person. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Very magical. Sha yeah, I... Shalan Rock should be the cook. <laughs> I will mention that uh, the magic person is like the most flexible job on the ship. For instance, it will have different effects if you appoint a mage versus a shaman, for instance. I see. So it's like, it's kind of like a wild card. Yeah, yeah uh, there are some static bonuses. Like, for instance, um, if you fight another ship and that other ship also has a mage or whatever, and they like have a magic duel, that will have be its own thing but for instance a shaman can like some summon winds to um make, make the ship it faster yeah mm -hmm. a mage uh, can summon fire to better burn any enemy ships etc etc okay question so we have the vrykul right mm -hmm. does the fact that there's a, a language barrier affect our bonuses almost certainly Okay, just sorry to make okay. sure. Because uh, if that, that wasn't a thing, I think she would be a good navigator, maybe. But since there's a language barrier, maybe not. I think we should also maybe, for the time being, slot some of us into the roles because yeah, definitely. If if we take off a character from the role, they'll get upset with us. But with yeah. as players, we don't get the same. Uh, also, feel free to ask me, like, hey, what does the ship carpenter position do in terms of game mechanics? Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, I realize... weren't, weren't some of the ogres, like, builders or whatever? Mm -hmm. They um, are capable of that, yeah. What does Nourish do again? Isn't he, like, the, um... Isn't he, like, a strong guy? Like, um, wasn't he, like... What, he's a shaman. Oh, wait, 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 he's actually a shaman? A more of a novice yeah. shaman, and physically he's not particularly strong. Oh, okay. So, hmm, I, I, I guess we could put him in Magic Person. And I don't think he'd be upset if Bud, you know, switched him out. Because he's pretty loyal. Okay, that, that's Probably. one to kind of think about. Because our boat is slower because we're, um, we have an Ogre crew. So maybe, maybe he could help somehow, Wind, or... I mean, but an, a, a Naga is kind of related to the sea. Maybe she can also do something. That's true. What was her encounter again? Wasn't wasn't she the one that Mira danced in front of and then shunk with her she dancing skills? She is very, very... Obsessed isn't the right word, but she's very focused, let's say, on history. Like, she would say, oh, that thing you just did, that's like the ancient battle of blah, 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 and, like, draw mm -hmm. references from that. Do you think maybe she'd be a good navigator because of that, then? Uh, also, again, feel I mean, free to, like, ask I mean, these she's people. Swim, I, I mean, aren't we sort of in a rush, like, in-game? Like, I, there's I would say time. no. I would say this will happen okay. while you are on the okay. way there. You're not like, oh, shit, the good fortune's there. Quickly, everyone to your posts. N not that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe. I don't know if swimming around and navigating a ship is very similar, but maybe. maybe. What should Benjamin do then? What should I do for Benjamin? Uh, I honestly don't see him particularly fitting with any of these, but... 
I mean, we should probably slot him in somewhere just because. Uh, um, I mean, if we we can trust Benjamin, we can't trust some of these other characters. I mean, uh, I, I I can do cook if we don't use uh, Chef Clunk. <laughs> also, again, uh, for you guys, the player characters, since it's yourselves, I can tell you like the bonuses that I have in mind, and feel free to argue with me about them. Ooh, okay. What's Benjamin's best bonus? Benjamin, um, he is slightly decent at being head carpenter. Not good, but decent. He's decent at being a cook, so plus one. Um, slightly bad at being a magic person, because he's not, like, he's not the worst at it, but he's still a novice. Uh, he is decent at being a clerk, decent at being a gunner, decent at being a security chief, Bad at being a navigator, because if you remember he, when we had like the thing with the map of Strangleform, Benjamin had no idea what everything it was. And uh, he would make a great first mate. Really? Put him in the first mate. Do it. Is it that played good? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Bud's decision, so I don't know. Yeah, it is Bud's decision. Um, I feel I like mean, probably... It'll... It'll be Wood rude to is promote Bladebeard to first mate. Bladebeard is captain. You can't be first mate. I mean, does Bladebeard know anything about navigating? Bladebeard, uh, I had him as a decent navigator, so plus one. Mm, okay. And what about first mate? Is he great too? Uh, I had him, Bladebeard, as a bad first mate, as a minus one. Cause, Ouch. Uh, spoiler, <laughs> spoiler, no, spoiler alert. The last He's the time, captain. Well, the last time Blaybeard was the first mate in the lore, he caused the mutiny against Caspian. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know, fair. up to, uh, up to bad, I suppose. <laughs> also, again, feel, um, feel free to interview people like the NPCs if you want. Uh, for some reason, I just imagine us... High speeds ramming into another ship, and in the meantime, we're just conducting interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I think. Uh, uh, is, is, let's like put a, a top three of people we want to interview, because otherwise, I think it's who do we bordering on about? goofy. I feel like the Naga lady feels like a interview almost. If we're doing magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Naga lady. Um. I mean, do we trust Gurian? Like, he wouldn't get upset. I, mean, I don't think Gurian but... makes sense for any position. I mean, he could be I good. Think... Think... He could be good. I, I don't think. He could be what? Sorry. He could be good at a carpenter. You know, he's strong. Uh, uh, I mean, being strong and being a good carpenter, there's a big difference. That's true. He, he's good at breaking stuff. Oh yeah, that's not what we need. <laughs> also, uh, if you want to speed run interviewing, you you can roll me carefuls. Uh, Benjamin, what else? Benjamin, hmm? Ross and yeah. Oh, actually, I should we decide dwarves. first? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they might be good. Uh, they could be good. That do they stuff. work as like a duo? Since uh, they you know. uh, they can be appointed separately or together, up to you guys. Hmm. Okay, maybe no, that works. Okay, I don't think we need to interview them. They can probably yeah. Mm, let, let's put let's put them aside too. Okay. Okay, and one more, right? One of three candidates, and we have kind of this pair in Minaka. Um, uh, I'd say we pick the old orc. He's nice. I don't know what he does, but uh, I guess we could ask. Yeah. I think if we put the old orc into any role, I think that the captain orc will be mad. That's funny. Well, if, that, if we that... pick him or her, because she's, she was the captain, right? Well, uh, she needs to be humbled, so it's fine. Uh, any more ideas aside from these? I don't know. I don't think I don't trust Bug to do anything, honestly. Uh, yeah, Dragon's yeah. kind of out of it. Uh, are Would... there like any other named ogres aside from the kind of shaman uh, one? Water eater. There's the there's the cook. Yeah, Chef Clunk. Chef Clunk, and there's, there, there's the uh, leader of the other. Yeah, tar, there's Tar. Tar, yeah. Yeah, but we don't trust him, so no. Y yeah. Uh, uh, anyone else? There's Norish. Norish? Who's that? Uh, he's a shaman guy. Oh, he's then like, the first one well, I mentioned. Okay, okay. I think he's that, like uh, Norg's best buddy. 
Shalan should be the quartermaster. He, he's yeah. a rock. Uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with this three. Everyone okay with that? Mm-hmm. Let's... Do you want to roll carefuls or do an interview? Can does... I... Wait, does Go Benjamin's ahead. stunt count with the carefuls? Let me check the wording on Benjamin's stunt, and I'll give you my verdict. If it's if it's something you can assume by looking at them, would it count? Because he might be like, ooh, that, those, those Iron Dwarf guys... Uh, look, uh, noticing uh, or mm-hmm. analyzing his surroundings, no, the uh, people are not surroundings. I will say that if we don't decide a uh, Chef Morg's just going to appoint Chef Clunk, because... That's just. I mean, considering most ghouls are ogres, I guess that makes sense. And I don't think any of these three are like cooks. So. I, so. I just want to mention that last time we didn't let Lyric cook. She murdered a bunch of people. So. No, that wasn't the Lyrian cook. No, that was that was the kobold. It was the that kobold was only wanted to be the cook. That was the issue. The kobold that we pitied, who ended up being, uh, you know, yeah. the greatest the of all. Funny thing is. Um, Based on her backstory, uh, I had Liri be a great cook, so she would give a plus two bonus. Oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> so, so do, do do I roll careful or uh... for whom? Oh, we need to go in order. Okay. Uh, well, let's go with Naga first, I guess. Uh, and what specifically are you curious about her? Uh, I- I'm curious about her navigating uh, skills and like any. Th- magic stuff that could be useful like uh, in a ship i guess sure please give me a careful and do say out loud what you get just in case the viewers can't see i got a three a three um you get the inkling that from her like general knowledge of history and such she at the very least would know her way around maps if that makes sense as for magic person, well, she was a spellcaster when you fought her, and she was a boss-level spellcaster at that. Ooh. So do I not get, like, any inkling of magic that could help, like, uh, in, like, apply it to, like, a ship situation? I'm not sure how um, else to explain it. What, Let me what kind of spellcaster was she? Wasn't she, like, a, a, a mage? Give me a second to look up her character sheet, because I don't a hundred percent remember what she was uh, good at. I think she was uh, the warlock one. No, she, she was not. She was fire? not. She was Did not she, didn't she throw fire or something? Or was that the door? She is an arcane spellcaster. Oh yeah, she's hmm. she's definitely arcane because she was the one trying to get into the Titan Vault. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So if she can, can she do a Jaina? <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh yeah, a flying ship. How quaint. Uh, okay. I guess we can move on to the next two then. The Iron Bros. Which one, Hrogi or Brig? Can't they like act as a unit? <laughs> I mean, they can, but they're also perfectly capable of being independent. Yeah, but they're bros, so it makes sense to use them both, especially if they work as carpenters. Uh, sure. Would you like to give me? Uh, a... Go ahead. I'm I'm curious about their uh, capacities for being carpenters, gunners, and like quartermasters. Give me a careful then, please. Come on. Uh, I got a one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. do I want to use a fate point? Let me. Uh. No, I don't. Okay. Use the pants. No, I will not. That roll with a one. Uh, they seem good, but they also like seem a bit broken. Like when they were, um, like when they basically like gave it away that Blaybeard was the one who blew up the volcano, for instance. Like they kind of got an error code when Blaybeard told them to shut up, for instance. So it's kind of hard to tell. Hmm, okay. This is more the result of you rolling a bat careful. <laughs> yeah. And now for the orc. Uh, what do I want to ask him about? Uh, like a gunner, maybe? Like yeah, gu- maybe a gunner, 
quartermaster and second mate, maybe? Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. Wasn't he like the old captain before the um, old I don't remember. Above board, yes. Uh, I got a five. Okay. Okay. Um, so quartermaster, gunner, and first mate were your, were your questions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The orc being the fact that he was already a first mate uh, and a former captain in that, uh, he's the best first mate that is not a playable character, if that makes sense. Um, so he's... Ooh, okay. That's interesting. Your other questions were gunner and quartermaster. Um, and navigator, I didn't ask about first mate. Oh, so... Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's at second mate. Oh, my bad, my bad. He's also a... a one of the best navigators because he has been around for a long while. Mm -hmm. um, and Gunner or Quartermaster, I guess I guess I'll tell you both because you got a very good role. Uh, he is a decent gunner, again, based on experience, um, but it's not like his preferred job. He will give you a plus one bonus, but not much else. And for Quartermaster, also a plus one because he's used to like organizing troops. Okay. Okay. Shall we make our decisions then? Let's do it. Let's make our decisions for the time being. Okay. First mate. Who's the first mate? I would say the Benjamin. Cat. I would say Benjamin makes sense because Moag trusts him and um, it would be rude to make anyone else first mate. And, like play bad because he's he'd be upset about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh... Yeah, from what we know, it's kind of a good choice, but uh, it's really about how Moorg feels about it all. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd say Moorg would definitely choose uh, Benjamin just because of their relationship and status and everything. So I, I'd say that makes sense to Moorg's character. I'm curious how that conversation goes. Uh, Benjamin would probably be like, really? Me? And then be like, really? And like, repeat that a couple of times. And then he's like, oh, okay. That's how I see it anyways. <laughs> and uh, I gave you bonuses to being a first mate because you are well liked by a lot of people, uh, if that makes sense. And you're kind of seen, if not, if even if you're not necessarily well liked, at the very least you're not disliked, if that makes sense. Yeah, do, do the do the do the ogres even have an opinion on me? Um, the, uh, above board, as I mentioned, the ogres are very easy to keep loyal. So whatever Morg says, yeah, we're on board. Mm, okay, so it's more of an importance to the other ten or fifteen or whatever. Gotcha. And, and I guess the one disloyal ogre tar. Hmm. Okay. The second mate then, uh, the orc, I guess. Yeah. Morg likes that orc, so and the orc likes him, so it kind of works in both ways. I, I feel like he doesn't know the history of the orc, but uh, I, I'd say he'd uh, he'd approve of that. Mm -hmm. uh, as to how that conversation would go, um, I guess Morg would be the one making the appointment, right? I assume a lot of this will just be kind of like. Not everyone, but like, uh, the orc would probably be something that people would bring up to Moorg, probably. He's, uh, I guess getting his bearings that he's a captain, and he's not exactly, uh, used to that. It's been more of a running gag that he wants to be captain, and now that he is, he's kind of, uh, catching up to that, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I guess when you, uh, approach him, uh, do you want to interact like actual giving out the position part or just uh, skip to like his answer, I guess? I'd like to do the uh, the full interaction, that's all right. Sure. Uh, you'd appro you can approach Junatom. He, I guess, would be probably like cleaning his armor from like the what happened today. Uh, and he would, as you would approach it, say, From Ka, Captain Chieftain. And he like, Smile, sort of amused at the title. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, hello. It's good to see you again. Likewise. May I aid you? 
Mm, yes, I am getting bearings as a uh, captain. I, uh, I am getting people positions, and uh, I think you would be a very good uh, second mate. He would be surprised at that and smile and say, it is a great honor to serve under you, but I'm not sure if this arrangement will be permanent. Hmm, you have duties to hoard? I'm a soldier first and foremost. And if, uh, he like, looks reluctant, if my captain will object, and like he'll indicate Raka, who will be on the ship somewhere, I will have to resign my post. That makes sense. Uh, well, in the meantime, you, uh, you work well, I think, for this job until we uh, break paths. Very well then, and keep like get up. Are we charting a different course, or are we still chasing this good fortune? Hmm, we still chasing fortune. It uh, very important to uh, well, he's still friend, but he 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 needs his mum, and I I understand blood is important. So, we are going to uh, rescue her. Very well. Then, I'll be re I'll be ready whenever we change course. Above board, um, the navigator is usually the one like on the steering wheel of the ship, like steering the ship itself. Would you, uh, for, uh, Jonathan would say, should I take charge of the helm, or do you have someone else in mind? Above, above board, this won't necessarily affect game mechanics. Hmm, I, I think it'd be uh, smart to have you on your new task already, so that way everyone gets used to everyone's positions. A wise, a wise choice, Captain Chieftain. What shall be your title, by the way? He, like, smiles, like, sort of amused. Hmm, didn't go much thought. Uh, Chief Captain. I am Chief Captain Morg. Blood and thunder, then, Chief Captain Moarg. It will be an honor to serve you. Hmm. You good to have you as well, friend. And he will give a nod and assume his position, unless there is something else. I don't think so. I think Moarg would uh, give him the uh, an imitation as best he can to an orcish salute, and then uh, wander off to. Uh, give out the remaining positions to people. Mm -hmm. Noted. Gunner. How would Bladebeard do as a gunner? Uh, he's one of the best available gunners. Oh, okay. Ooh. Is he up to it? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, we can have that conversation. Um, I mean, what is he going to do again? Basically, he's in. Obviously, he's in charge of the cannons. Not like necessarily like he's not gonna be like reloading alongside the crewmen or whatever. He's just gonna give orders like fire at this time and like um, wait until we're closer. Like specific like strategic orders like that. I guess considering, you know, we're after the good fortune. I guess it kind of makes sense. Uh, the only kind of objection I would have is. Um, the gunner would have to stay on the ship and Bladebeard wouldn't necessarily be able to, like, go to the Good Fortune to rescue his mother. Oh, oh no. okay. I mean, would, we, would the ships be actively shooting at each other while we're, like, boarding? That doesn't make a lot of sense, I think. Shrug? <laughs> I don't know. Just my thoughts, I guess. Um... I guess we can jump to the next one and decide it after. Yeah, uh, what's what's Larry's best one again? Is it uh, Leary? Uh, Leary, you're a mediocre carpenter. Not good, not bad. A great cook. Um, a great magic person. A great quartermaster. Oh my god! <laughs> an absolutely awful gunner. Makes sense. A bad security chief. A decent navigator. And a horrible first mate. 
Yeah. I'd say Quartermaster. It's kind of the one I'm struggling with with these last few. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I think she can fill in a few spots, so I think having her on Quartermaster for the time being makes sense. Because um, we have the Nargan lady who can fit in Magic Person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have Clunk for the Ogres, and... Well, I'm curious if the appointment is final, how does that conversation go? If it's final. For Larry? Hmm? Quartermaster, that's the logistics, right? Logistics and also handling the bookkeeping and ship expenses. Yeah. Um, I guess, hmm, how would Larry react to being told to do that? And I'm curious how would Morg tell her, if Morg is the one who tells her. I mean, he is handing these out. I, I assume most of these were like almost pre-discussions or he's kind of just going to doing what he thinks, thinks is best. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to give his friends positions, right? He can't not do that. I mean, he knows you guys the best outside of the ogres, which, again, if we don't talk about certain ones, Morg's going to probably be like, mm, well, I really like Nourish, or I really like Chef Clunk, which, again, Chef Clunk's probably going to be his go-to at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't think Bud even, like, she and Larry said she can cook, but I don't think Bud's ever tasted her cooking, so it wouldn't make sense for him to, you know, go to He's her. very biased to clunk. That's that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like, if it, someone says, well, it, well, I don't like his cooking, Morg will be like, well... Morg wouldn't understand. But I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes sense from a character perspective. Um, I guess Larry would be fine with that. I... I, I mean, I think her being, like, involved in the ship at all was, like, a, a blessing, I guess, because she was expecting to be kind of disposable, so I think she wouldn't mind it, but, um, I mean, I guess there's a level of control involved with, mess, you know, looking after all the expenses, so I think she'd appreciate that, and she would understand why... You know, they wouldn't want her to do stuff like, you know, be in charge of magic stuff because, you know, <laughs> last time Larry did magic stuff on the ship, it, um, it almost sank. So, she'd understand why she'd be put in that position. Above board, I don't think, I don't actually know if Larry cares about this or not, but the Quartermaster can often be also one of the wealthiest people on ship because... She's the one in charge of the finances. She can, you know, say, oh, we only made that much money and pocket some of the rest. Mm-hmm. That's true. I don't know if Lyric cares about that, though. I don't think Lyric cares about that, but I think Lyric, um, kind of knows what is necessary and won't, you know, she won't overspend on food for the ogres and such, because... Um, you know, she just kind of, uh, I guess she's more realistic than if someone like Bud was managing finances and he'd be like, oh, give all, give all the money for food for the ogres. I don't know. <laughs> oh. uh, he, he's, he doesn't know, really know too much on that front, so it's yeah. probably smart for somebody besides Morg to be, like, in charge and, of... And also, she doesn't really have any biases towards people on the ship. Like, I guess she likes a couple people, but there's no, like major faction like she's biased towards i guess i i think the only thing that i can think of is he knows that bladebeard wouldn't be a good person to handle that because Blade, he knows how has, he is bladebeard has a minus two at being a quartermaster specifically because he'd pocket the money yeah, yeah. I, I imagine he uh maybe while he was a captain they were good at uh like making money, but also very good at spending it. <laughs> also, Bladebit can't read, so I don't know how we'd have yeah, to interpret all, Th of the, um, all of the stuff for the finances. He would spend all the money on rum and hair products for his beard. Also, I'm curious if you guys can guess, um, there's two other people who are absolutely awful at being Quartermaster. 
One of them is Gurren for obvious reasons. One of them is the one's Bug. It has Bug. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. No. Bug is actually no? decent at being a quartermaster. Hmm. Yeah, I kind um, of figured he wouldn't be terrible at it. Would it be like Tar or something? The cat? I didn't really count the cat for the things, but if you want, yeah, I we should have. We should, speaking of cat, we should add a new slot that's like the emotional support pet or something. <laughs> yeah, the mascot. Mascot, yeah. The mascot is Shalon. <laughs> uh, unironically, we can do that. Uh, I guess it would provide a small bonus to loyalty, but if it's stupid, it might damage uh, the loyalty. Yeah, that'd be cool. Sure, I'll do that. Okay. So, magic person, the Naga, I guess. That's How me. would yeah. Bud introduce that to the Naga? Uh, I, I guess Benjamin could do that, since he was kind of the one that recruited her. I think it would make more sense. Oh, you think Benjamin would kind of... Yeah, it's kind of... I, I, yeah, I don't... Middle man. I mean, he is also the first mate, so it kind of makes sense that Morg would delegate some things to him, and I don't think Morg would even consider a magic person, really. Uh, can you guys hear me, by the way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, we can now. Right, right, right. Um, sure. I'm... Sorry for being silent, I'm trying to make the, like, mascot slot without moving and damaging stuff. Oh, it stuff. didn't need to be now, but... <laughs> well, if I don't do it now, I'm gonna forget about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Ooh, th this, th this gives stakes for keeping our characters alive, because if our, if our second mate dies, then we could get lost at sea. We gotta be careful. Well, we can replace him. And we are going to lose him at some point, so... Yeah. Yeah, he has to go back to the horde and do horde things at some point. And Morg knows that. So, so, so we got to be careful with our characters. We can't be... We can't be letting them... Uh, I mean, I want to say... Morg knows some waters. Not all waters, but... I, I, I think... Um, if you're knows. curious, Morg, I had you as a bad navigator. Oh, really? Yeah. Not, really? Not awful, but bad. I bet Morg would be, like, a good gunner. Is that his, like, best thing? Oh, yeah. He, he he would be an awesome gunner, because he, like, one of his aspects, I don't remember if it still is, was heavy weapons expert. He also had... handles a cannon all the time, so that makes sense. Although he'd have to stay on the ship, which isn't really a bad thing when you think about it, but... I mean... He's a ranged character, kind of. So I guess he can. He's he he's. It's funny because he's he's both ranged and melee, which is not what I planned, but it does make sense for him. <laughs> Breitbeard's the mascot. Of course. Uh, the viewers aren't able to see. I'm trying to select the fucking square, but it's selecting the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, feel free to keep discussing or ask questions while I finish with that. Can, can, can we have a ship cook for the ogres and a ship cook for the others? No. Of course you can. But, uh, oh, it'll be like an RP thing? Mechanically, you, mechanically you can. Uh, it's just that... Um, like... It may be a bit overkill, I guess. Like, that one crew member may be better used somewhere else, I guess. Ogre kill. It's already ogre. I say magic person, naga. Yeah. Shift cook. Sh shift cook. Chip oh. cook. Ubi chef clunk. Um. Can we, give me can we make your dad the carpenter? He was like... Wasn't he like a lumberjack or something? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he lived in the Eastvale Logging Camp area, but... <laughs> um, I don't know if that makes him a lumberjack. Above, above board, because, because of that, I had him being a decent carpenter. Okay, he's fair not, enough. He's I, not, I guess uh, looking at lumberjacks from his window trains him. I would say there are... Uh, what, uh, I would say there are, uh, there are better carpenters out there. Go ahead. He wears flannel, so it makes him a good carpenter what? by default. Um, would would Naresh be a good carpenter? I just want to know that. Mm, 
Um, I don't think I can tell you because I uh, your memories aren't fully back yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, sense. so he'd probably at Moorg would probably ask Nourish then if he'd be good at. Sure, Nourish would say, uh, "I'm um, decent. Uh, I know, um, like he would." Did you give Nourish a staff? I don't remember. If he did, he would like indicate it, uh, and uh, he would say, "Made this, um, and also uh, um, helped with repairs on the other ship when your friend went crazy." Hmm. What I thought. But board, he has a plus one, so he's good, but not the best. Is it about the same as Ben's grandfather? Or grandfather? Like grandfather. <laughs> and I don't know. Old, okay. I, I I was looking at him and I was like, that guy looks old. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh yes, it's about it's the same as uh Ben's father, but again there are better ones out there. Oh interesting. I mean for the time being E the choice probably won't hate us if we do yeah, it then later. Yeah, that early. makes sense. I think Morg would choose Nourish just because he trusts Nourish and he doesn't he looks at Benjamin's father and is like, that guy is... You see scrawny. <laughs> yeah, that guy is puny. He's very skinny. How's he meant to build a ship? I think he just feels bad for him. <laughs> Fair enough. And we agreed Chef Kong could definitely be the cook, right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely wouldn't be the co cook? Or no, would be the cook? Would be the cook. Okay, just making sure, because Morg would have been like, yeah, yeah, I like that guy. Uh, how does the... Just to cook! How does the appointment go? I'm curious. Uh, about the cook? About I him. mean, mm -hmm. isn't, he, isn't he already cooking for the crew? <laughs> yeah, I think you'd probably find him preparing a hot pot. Oh, my friend. Hmm? He smells good things again. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, yes. Was thinking of cooking rat lady. Where's she at? Oh, uh, wind take her away. She's elsewhere. Oh. Then what eat? Mm, you will find something. We plenty of fish, plenty of good stuff around, around the sea, and uh, I don't know if there's any lands nearby, but when we get to land, we'll we will hunt and catch prey. Mm, mm, I have to search ship hold, mm, but pretty empty. We'll scrape, scrape around, maybe have food for a day, yes. What do you want to eat if have choice? Hmm, well, we, we will look around ship. I'm sure Orcsies have nice, nice food. They yes, usually do. Yes, Orcsies, they taste good, yes, yes. No, no, they, they are friends. We, we we don't eat friends on ship. What? Why not? Well, they we they are friends. We're not going to eat them. They they help us. I'd eat you if you die. Well, when I'm dead, I guess you can eat me. But ah, uh, and you can eat me if then? I'm dead. Well. I'm trying to kick that habit, but yeah, I, I guess it would be. But but they are alive right now. That that the main thing. Mm, so hit first, then eat. No. No hitting. Mm. You you make job difficult, Ugh, chieftain. But. Ugh. I can handle, handled worse. Yes, yes. Make grand feast with. Uh, think about it, yes. Mm. He would rush to the cargo hold, which is mostly empty, to try to find something to cook for the day. Above board. You do good then. Yes, do best, do best. Above board. Chef Clunk is a great chef for the ogres. He give a plus two bonus, but for everyone else, um, he's neither good nor bad. Like he's not a bad cook, but for like non-ogre people, he's like 
all of his f- meals are meat and questionable meat at that. Like if, <laughs> I if, thought it'd be worse, honestly. So I'm satisfied. <laughs> yeah. Um. Again, well, he's good at cooking the meat, but after a while, you'll get tired of just eating meat. If that makes sense. Yeah. Can I get a vegan burger? Hmm. One. Hmm. Looks at you yeah. confused. So, yeah, so uh, do 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 all, do all ogres get scurvy since they only eat meat? Yeah, probably. Hmm. I mean, interesting. Um, haven't you seen that they actually? Actually, I guess they do have a, a lot of their teeth together. Anyway. I mean, we, they do eat. They did eat fruit in in the high mall days, but you know, that's that's high mall. Hmm. <laughs> I have two ideas for a gunner. There is that gnome with the bazooka. The oh, Sitaun. right. There was a gnome with the bazooka. I thought she g- or he got left behind on Lapidus. Yeah, didn't we enable the gnomes to die? Yeah, cause I think gnome... a couple jumped on board, right? Like two or three. Can we do a roll to see if... Zuka was on the ship. Yeah, sure, we can. Uh, would anyone like to roll a d20 or should I roll? I'm asking because it might take a while for my roll to go through. Um, I'll roll. Uh, a d20, please. Slash roll space d20. A two. Mm, he's dead. <laughs> Very dead. You, <laughs> Chef Clunk, uh, uh, says... <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Chef Clunk comes out, comes up from the cargo hold, um, and like says, mm, "A phone, phone, good eat, Captain. Uh, uh, f- think I ate it. Sorry, Captain, Chieftain. Oh, no. oh yeah, well, Sp- we we spit- all get hungry sometimes. Spits out, um, what's the word? The like trigger for the bazooka. Uh. Hmm." I don't think you should be eating those, though. They look like bad for heart. Mm, mm, mm. Find better oh. eat. Yes. Goes back below deck. It, M- make sure you share next time. Mm, sorry, Chieftain, Captain. Yes. If someone hits uh, Chef Clunk with a fireball, he'll explode. Probably. Oh, no. Probably. He ate uh, a bazooka. It's true. He's got to eat something cold to um survive. Oh, he's got or, to wait. Or maybe if he's, he's got hard. to survive three days until he poops. It, maybe if you out. punch him the right way, it, yeah, it, he'll just shoot up bullets from his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Sure. Um, okay. Who is the other gunner you were thinking about, Blake? Uh, the the gnome that uh, Tom Shire came up with. Fizzle, Fizzle. Aren't they on the other ship? No, no, he's one of the. Oh, good they're guys. here. Yeah. yeah look. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that would that would work. He is a gunner. <laughs> That's his whole job. I actually, I actually forgot to like rank them, but yeah, um, he would be a great gunner. Yeah. My bad. I forgot to rank them, but yes, in hindsight, he would be a great gunner. Do we know that? I guess Benjamin interacted with them, right? Did I? I don't think so. When they, like, at the base of the volcano, did we not interact with them? Uh, you briefly interacted with them. Um, too briefly. Um, I guess we can say maybe Linda Krem, the former captain of the Good Fortune, would approach Morg. Oh, Linda's here! Yeah. Uh, would approach Morg and say, uh, are you looking for a, a gunner? Mm, I'm pretty good at them, but I I think that if we need good gunner that isn't me, uh, maybe you work well. I'm all right at it, but uh, Fizzle used to be our gunner back on the Good Fortune. He's um, quite good at it. Oh, w- w- where he? Um. Well, if he wasn't eaten, he should be around here somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, trying my best to make sure ogres don't eat people. Bit hard. 
Uh, yeah, I, 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 I can imagine. <laughs> Laughs uncomfortably. Oh, I, I, I don't eat anymore. I, I used to, but not anymore. Anymore? Okay. Looks less, com even less comfortable. Well, uh, I'll, I'll leave you to it, um, Captain Chieftain. <laughs> so, what do? I think Fizzle is a is a good choice for a Gunner. We have to find him though. Yeah, I guess Morg would go and look for. The why is he? Why isn't he yell for him? He's got a loud voice. I can assist Bud if he's gonna roll. Sure, give me uh, a flashy, please, Morg, because you're yelling. Uh, so that's uh, free. Yes. Yeah. Um, Farmshire, do you want to role play Fizzle as we usually do, or? Uh, no, you can take it. Okay. Now just give me a second. To look something up. Uh, okay, um, he. You'd hear a voice. Hmm? Hmm? You called? Is that. Uh, you're not my grandson, but you're tall. Did you call for me? Mm hmm. I am looking for a gunner for a ship. Oh, right, right. Well, uh, it's. Uh, it's, my, it's my hobby. And uh, I'm quite good at it. Uh, I've never handled um, these spiky cannons, but I'm sure they're no different. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure I can also make some adjustments to them. Okay, that uh, that sounds good then. Ah, uh, right, right. Uh, so you're the new uh, captain. It seems that way. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, is uh, uh, what's your name again, please, son? Morg. Morg. Ca Chief Morg. Captain Morg. Chief Captain Morg. Chief Captain Morg. All right, all right. Uh, say, do you, um, do you have anything uh, special in mind for the cannons? Uh, do you want me to make them special in some other, in some way? Hmm. Been a while since I tinker with cannons, mostly at good powder. Um, well, you know, and I suspect you good at tinkering better than me, so yeah, add, add nice advancements. All right, right, uh, of course, I can do that, but uh, I was thinking, do you have anything in particular in mind? Or do you want them to, um, hmm. What shall they do? What shall they do? Oh, maybe they can fly temporarily and throw themselves, but how, how would you recover them? I'll give it a brainstorm. I'll give it a brainstorm and uh, come up with something. Unless you have any ideas. Hmm, it sounds very fancy. Um, mm, good ideas with cannons. Uh, maybe uh, cannons that fire anchor chains and they connect to the other ship and drag them to our ship oh for boarding oh yes yes i i think well that technology already exists already but uh, i'm sure i can uh so it will be a little boring but we can make it work definitely definitely all right all right above board mm, above like board that. Hmm? Above board, you can uh, convert the cannons to grappling hooks, which would mean that it wouldn't it, they wouldn't deal damage to enemy ships, but they would be better. Like they, it would be much easier to board them. Up to you. I mean, how many uh, more cannons do we have? You are on, on board a warship. Yeah, I mean, we could just convert a couple instead of all of them. And I mean, don't Horde Warships already have those types of cannons? I don't recall if these ones do. Well, actually, uh, it kind of depends on, like, 
what the plot demands usually. So, uh, would these ones have... Yeah, I guess if they were in like this part of the world, they'd be used for like um, raiding merchant ships and stuff like that. So I guess they would have a few like grappling cannons already. But the majority would still be like normal cannons, if that makes sense. Can we get to lodge you as a magic person? Thank you. I'm just imagining that scene where uh, she summons Razan to push the dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. Can we get someone who can summon dinosaurs? I don't know, maybe the Naga can summon a Kraken to do that. True. Um, is Benjamin gonna be the middleman between Bud and the Yeah, Naga? that makes sense. Okay. So any, do you guys have anyone in mind for the magic person and the ship mascot? The ship mascot, Shalon Rock, and a magic person, the Naga. And the rock. Uh, okay. Um, so, the is that the final call that the sh that the rock will be the ship mascot? I mean, it's kind of Eldritch. It shows a good idea. <laughs> I mean, we could have the cat, but I think the rock is funnier. <laughs> okay, it is. I feel like this though. might have just. I, I feel like this might have some diminishing returns. Uh, yeah. I don't know, you're called Captain. I don't know. I, I think Borg would probably just choose the cat, just because it's, it's a cat. He's gonna keep the rock in his pocket, especially since, like, it, like, gets really depressive around Leary. So, mm. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it does have, like, social anxiety. It might not be a good idea. Yeah, I, I, I think I think Morg will just choose the cat because he's mm. more Makes familiar sense. with the cat. And that would probably mean the cat gets more treats, which would make it happier. So, yeah, maybe it will work. Okay, okay. Um, above board, the cat makes for a decent, not great mascot. Uh, Shalon Rock would be a minus two mascot. Oh, wow. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's, yeah. he, he's, even though he's friendly, he's a no abomination. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, isn't it a rock? It's just a rock. No worries. Yeah, but it talks and it freaks out whenever Liri's nearby. <laughs> yep, I had a feeling that would happen. Even Moorg knew that would happen. He had to experience that. He's like, mm, I'm just gonna put you back in my pocket. But... <laughs> Maybe in like a month, he'd be a decent mascot after everyone gets used to it. But at the beginning, no, he, he'd get a, give give everyone a minus two. No, that. Okay. All right. There's one more slot. No, get clap clap clap. Benjamin, you gotta you gotta use your your skills to make Bud see your see your way. M my skills? Yeah, to convince Bud. Hmm. Uh, well, I guess I am the first mate. Um, yeah, I'll uh, make my way over to Bud. Bud's probably like just finished appointing um, F Fizzle as the gunner, I imagine. Uh, hey, um, um, Captain uh, Chieftain, uh, whatever you're going by uh, at this point, do I need to be this formal or can uh, I? Don't uh know. You, you, fr you old friend at this point, Benjamin. Uh, okay, I I I'm just worried the crew might take the wrong idea, but anyways. Uh, you know uh, how, you know, um, maybe we should have, like, someone help out with more, you know, more magic -y combat on our ship, you know. It's kind of useful to, like, toss a fireball or two against another ship. Maybe make some magic to, I don't know, push the ship around, you know, stuff like that. Uh, m magic stuff, y yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. What are you thinking? Uh, y you know, like the Naga we recruited on the island, right? 
I don't know, I think she knows a way, her way around the water, and she was, you know, kind of powerful uh, with her magic stuff. Hmm. Magic Naga lady, huh? Oh. Do you trust her? Uh, I mean, I have no reason to not trust her at this point, I think. Well, that, uh, that's a good point, then. I think, uh, we can make Naga lady... In charge of magic stuff, then? Yeah, just see it this way. It's not like she has, like, a leadership role or anything, so it's kind of more like a support thing, so the risk isn't any different than if she were, like, just lounging on the ship, I think. Uh, you want to make her the magic-appointed person, then? Yeah, yeah, that that, that would make sense, I think. Use the good old Benjamin charm. Just uh, to lose it too much. Uh, I'm not sure. No, it no, no want. I'm not sure it works on fish, but um, uh, uh, I'll try. Uh, I suppose. I don't know. I'll just ask. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Don't, don't use that charm too much, because oh, okay. get nasty lady yeah. all over you. Yeah. Uh, and then they wrestle you. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll get that done. Um, see you in a bit, I suppose. Okay. I have a question. When you first defeated the Naga lady and she swore loyalty to you, I don't remember. Did she swear loyalty to Mira or to Bladebeard? I think it was to me, wasn't it? I don't remember that. Because she I think I I held her. Blade. I held her like a blade point or something. Right. Okay. Okay. I yeah. I think it was just the crew in general because she was so dismayed that we beat her or whatever. Right. Impressed, not dismayed, but sure. Um. Okay. Duly noted. Um. I think before Benjamin reaches, uh, Helza. That's her name. Um. Helza would approach you, Liri. Now that like everything has calmed down a little bit, and she would say, Apologies, Madam Elf. I believe we have not met before? <laughs> um, I assume not. I didn't recognize your face. My name is Helza. I was a sorceress of the Coven of Saja Majin. Hmm. A sorceress, you say? Yes. Um, may I ask, what what manner of creature are you? The magic that you're emanating is most peculiar. Hmm. I'm but a Sindorai, a, a blood elf. Ah, uh, one of the followers of Daphromare. Hmm. Mm hmm. Larry will not, um, approvingly. Above board, does Larry know who that is? I assume so. Don't they have a um? Don't they have a like a um? What's the word? Like a, a shrine for him in Sunstrider Isle? I uh, think they, they do. They do. But like, um, I mean, I, I assume that if there's one there, it's probably one in other places. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I'm just thinking. Like, I know real life examples of. There's big statues in my city, and I know real-life friends who don't know who the people in the statues are, but sure. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, she will say, I don't recall Daphromar mm, consorting with the magic of the fo of the old ones, let's put it at that. Well, I'm a bit of a special case. Indeed. May I ask how you came into contact with this magic? Saja Majin was quite insistent on communing with you and finding out about you. Uh huh. I made some dealings with beings that aren't from this world, I suppose. I think they're not from this world. They're, um. I've never seen them before. Mm. And may I ask what are your intentions? Do you feel the voice is nagging at you? Uh, does Larry right now? I don't think she does. Larry right? always does, but I think she's learned how to like tune them out. 
Okay. Nuri will shrug. Do not underestimate their power, follower of Daphromar, or they may overtake you. I'll keep that in mind. Mm. If you need if you need any advice on dealing with them, feel free to consult with me. Very well. Um not uh, for um oh, I apologize. Uh I don't believe uh, I've stated what my role on this ship is. You rarely ever see Naga traveling on ships, I imagine. I am sworn to the service of Benjamin Aaron, Captain Blaybeard, Captain Mowarg, and Mira. I see. If you do not cause trouble, then I believe we do not have anything to... Mm, be on opposite grounds of. Above board the DM brain farted, sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Leary will silently nod yet again. Well, I also hope that we do not meet any others of my kin. They seem quite interested in you. And I can finally start to understand why. <laughs> I'm not that interesting, am I? Oh, on the contrary. If, if I were not bound by any oaths, I would slay you and dissect you. <sighs> this whole thing again. Fret, fret not, I will do no such, no such thing unless those four demand me demand that I do it. So, again, we shall have no issues, but you are simply fascinating. Mm -hmm. ah. To a, cheer, to a benefit, mutually beneficial cooperation, I say. Yuri kind of raises an eyebrow. Um, yeah, to a mutually beneficial cooperation. She'd extend one of her four hands, I think, towards you and, s and say, I believe this is how mortals agree upon something? Uh, yeah. Uh, above what you would say, surface dwellers, not mortals, my bad. Do you take uh, her hand? Yeah. Uh, may I get a uh, careful from you? Sure. A one. That is her sneaky. Do you want to improve your role or shall we leave it at that? Um. <sighs> Let's leave it at that. Okay. Uh, just in case the viewers couldn't see, uh, um, Helza rolled a free. Okay. Um, so you shake hands, and I imagine at this point, Benjamin would show up. And uh, Helza would say, Ah, the honored first commander. Uh, hmm. I'm still getting used to those titles. Uh, I think the term is first mate, actually. Hmm, hmm. Not a very inspiring title, is it? I believe uh, Lord Protector is a title that human second-in-commands have for, like, their mm. kingdoms and such. Mm, I feel Lord Protector is slightly more fitting to the third mate since they, you know, handle security and all. But Lord uh, Regent, and Lord Regent, that's another title. Uh, hmm. Well, I mean, this ship is hardly a kingdom, but... That's not really why I'm here. Uh, Benjamin sort of looks around and sees that she was talking to Lyria. And I mean, they were of, shaking hands when you came in. Yeah, and he kind of just goes, uh, okay. And then he kind of turns his attention back to the Nag again. So, um, y you know, uh, you're, you know, very adept in magic, right? Yes. I, well, I do not mean to brag, but I would say so. Um, you know, it would be very helpful if you would be, like, our ship's official caster, you know? Uh, maybe you have a grander title for that, but, uh, you know, someone that, you know, mm. is handling the m magic around the ship, for the lack of a better term. Supreme Arcanist. Would that be alright? Mm, uh, sure. Uh, yeah. 
they'll let the captain know of the name change. I would gladly accept, and I would say that it is position most be- most befitting of my skills. Now, mind, I am not um, a tide caster like those of Colt Ross, nor am I a shaman, so um, my skill set isn't necessarily specialized with uh, sailing, but I do excel at countering other mages. Above board, um, because of her skill set, she won't like provide bonuses to like the speed of the ship or um, stuff like that. But she is, as she mentioned, excellent at countering enemy mages, uh, which would include like fire throwing ones, for instance. Mm-hmm. So think of her more like a sort of defensive magic person. Yeah, gotcha. Is this acceptable? Yes, that will be very useful. Then I look forward to my continued service and I hope to write our names in the history books. Uh, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, make some big change. <laughs> yeah, she and... would... Ex- I was sort of imagining she'd extend a hand towards you, but you'd already be turning away. Yeah, I'm kind of like slowly stepping away (laughs) because I'm not sure how to end this conversation. She, I guess, would... Is Lyri still around? Um, I think she would have left because she doesn't want to, I guess, intrude on Benjamin's conversation. Sure. Um, She would say... Quite impolite, I think. But I will assume my duties, nevertheless. And she'd like bow in a sort of exaggerated but sincere manner. Benjamin nods in return. Alrighty. Do you. Uh, Yeah, before that, I'll just get back to Bud and let him know that uh, she's the supreme arcanist of the ship. (laughs) And not just a magic person. Hmm? Does that conver- is that conversation something we should point the camera at? I'm curious. No, no, no. Just letting him know, like, in character, I guess. Okay. Uh, do you want me to tally up all the bonuses that you guys have? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'll also type them... Uh, to the right of the screen after I, like, uh, say them out loud. And we better not um, let any of our characters die because then our stats will go down. Um, well, actually, before I do that, Blaybeard, Doom Goblin, I would like to yep. offer you a compel. I would like to compel your you face Bladebeard Pyrelord of the Blackwater Raiders you just notice that, like, out of your three, well, three other friends, let's say, main friends, let's say, you're the only one without a job. That's outrageous. You're Captain fucking Blaybeard. You should be captain or at the very least first mate. And you're gonna make it your job to become that. Either, preferably captain, but if nothing else, at least first mate. Uh, I think Blaybeard is currently too high to think about stuff like that I, I will uh, not accept very well compel. your choice I'll take away one of your fate points okay so tallying up all your totals uh, you your selection provides plus seven to the loyalty of the crew and specifically plus nine to the ogres which It's a bit overkill because they were already at like a 10 out of 10. Um, Your choice of navigator provides a plus 2 to um, navigating pretty much and to speed. And because the ogres provided a minus 2 to speed, that evens out to having neutral speed, let's say. Uh, You have a plus 2 to melee combat on the ship because of the ogre crew. You have a plus 2 to your finances. 
a plus one to your ship's ability to take damage, uh, a plus two to ship-to-ship -ship combat, a plus two to magic attacks, and a plus three to magic defense. Make sense? Uh-huh. And I'll type all of that on screen momentarily. Uh, this might take me a second, so feel free to discuss if you guys are happy with that and all that. Uh, basically cover for me while I type that in. This is just like Assassin's Creed for... Really? Yeah, because you have a ship in that game. Yeah, I know, but you you don't get to like uh, choose who's what role. Yeah. There's only a, a captain and a first mate. I think yeah, I think in true. Assassin's Creed um, Odyssey you can have like more slots for like red those you find. Oh, nice. But I think it's just combat slots. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I forgot that late bit was high. That's a um. That should you know be a. That should be you know the most important thing right now. What? We should all talk about how Blade Bird's high, and that should be the plot of the episode. I mean, that's not very oh. different from how he is usually. That's true. Well, he can see uh, magic now, I guess. You're more attuned to magic, and um, again, um, it aren't really able to tell that what you're sensing is magic. Rather, like, for instance, Liri and Moarg like, they feel more present to you. Like, you can sort of sense they're there, but you're not sure why. So, but, same same with Helza and Arthur, the um, Gvaldir lady, and Karo Grim Totem. Doesn't Bladebeard already sense Liri is there? True, but, like, the way Bladebeard sensed that Liri was there was through, like, a constant ringing and pinging in his mind. Now he's also sensing Liri with, like, Sort of an instinctual awareness of his surroundings. Hmm. What about uh, Lyra's brother? His location hasn't changed, right? Do you remember you used your stunt to also try yeah. him? I mean, it has changed, but not in a major way. Like, he was heading somewhere and he's made progress towards heading towards that certain place, but not like major progress. All right. I mean, he's so far away that I think that it'd be hard to, like, Yeah, you know. specifically quantify it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, instead of, like, I don't know, 610 kilometers, he's, like, six, 613 kilometers away, for instance. Just as an example. Yeah, yeah, just asking. Understandable, understandably, understandable why you would ask. Um, alrighty then. Now... Before the uh, encounter, well, before reaching the good fortune, uh, Liri, you will get a sending um, mm -hmm. from Mirina. Do you remember Mirina, Zarin? Mira? Mirina, Mirina. Oh, Mirina. I was like, yeah, I remember Mirina. She's the um, the Southern Fury Mage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the one that's not uh, evil, but she's kind of a bitch. Uh, you get a pretty semi-frantic sending that uh, that says are you safe do you need aid the rat said you're in trouble focus your magic so we can hone in on your location um how did i respond i'll copy paste that in chat 25 words right 25 words yes okay i haven't done this in a while let me get my mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Got to get my Google Docs out so I can count the words. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure. Uh, while that happens, um, I'm curious. Blaybeard, how do you feel about like the sh the new ship hierarchy? I'm curious, especially since you're not part of it. Yeah, he's fine with it. As a like a. When it comes to who do who did we choose for uh, each role, I think that uh, everyone's a pretty good fit, except maybe Leary. Mm -hmm. She she is horrible at any 
any anything except for murdering his friends and family. Of course. Who would blame you to point as the quartermaster in her stead? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I have no idea actually. <laughs> uh, who would be good out of these people? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, I guess robots should be good at accounting uh, stuff. I don't know, that may be Linda. Valid choices, valid choices. Okay, I got the um, response for uh, Mirena. Alright. Lirina, Lirina, Lirina says, I'm fine, I'll be fine. They have magic, they have magic dampening runes around me. I'll try breaking out and destroying them and she will not try and give her magic signature to Mirena. Okay, okay. Noted, noted. The magic dampening runes is a, is a very way of trying to, you know, deceive them as to why she can't do it. Uh, may get a clever from you, Zarin. Sure. Uh, Does my stunt apply? Let me f uh, check to see. Uh, invest Could... Investigating magic. Oh, yeah. Investigating. This, um... No, she's not I investigating didn't. anything. She's hypothesizing. It's different. Very much so. So unfortunately, not. I'm stuck with a two. Ooh. Uh, what can I tell you with a two? Because that's not a lot. But it's not nothing. Um. Your uh, should probably still like avoid maybe like. Excessive displays of magic, you guess? Mm -hmm. Like they're probably still looking. Not much else I can tell you. Yeah. Okay. Duly uh, noted. And um, give me a second for another thing. Um, Zarin, remember that thing I mentioned before the session? I'm gonna DM you. Uh, in a second, okay? Okay, okay. All right. While I do that, I think, uh, shall we resume with where we left off last time of you guys approaching the good fortune? Mm-hmm. Okie dokie. Uh, let me make a note about uh, my editing. So, first of all, you would notice the dense fog as you would begin approaching uh, the good fortune itself. Um, do let me know if like you want the advice of any one of your like officers, like especially your magic person, for instance, uh, or do you just proceed ahead? Uh, I guess I'll ask her if this fog is natural. Uh, and I will roll to see if she has anything to say. Shrugs says, fog happens all the time on the sea, with that roll. Mm. Okay. Can you do, like, anything to, you know? I am not a weather man, sir. One of the tide casters of the cult of the cult here in snow. Mm. Okay. I just thought I would ask. Um, anyways, uh, remain alert in case, you know, anyone plays at anything. Hmm. Very well. Very well. Very well. Um. Also, Zerun, you could have thought of a third option potentially, but thank you for your reply. Mm-hmm. Uh, True. Noted. And uh, you continue your approach. You enter the dense fog. Again, do let, feel free to stop me at any time if you'd like to talk among yourselves uh, or discuss your options. Uh. But if not, eventually you would see a small clearing in the fog uh, where the good fortune lies moored to a rock in the middle of the ocean. Lots of rocks in the middle of the ocean lately. Is this normal, bud? Are there like random rocks in the middle of the ocean? Hmm. 
Sometimes. Sometimes they usually spiky rocks sticking out of ocean, and or sometimes they just little rocks. But like, how big is this rock? Like, it is there a land on it? It towers. It, it towers above like, the good fortune. Like it's taller than the good fortune. But so it it's is, very suspicious. Well, I will say, um, it's basically um, feel free more because you've been at sea to give me a clever i guess um but i will say it's it's yeah feel free to give me a clever morgue can larry kind of look at the fog and see if there's anything special about it oh that's good uh yes you may roll me a careful to answer uh, to uh, morgue i will say um Rocks just like p jutting out of the ocean. Yeah, it can happen, def uh, definitely. And if you look at the map, you'll see that there are some like sandbanks nearby. So it's the rock itself is probably natural. Uh, Liri, if you're careful of zero, it's fog. Yep, it's fog. Larry will, I guess. Um and Benjamin because she still doesn't trust Bladebit and needs to be near them in case, you know, he tries anything. Uh, does anyone, like, have a spyglass or something like that? Bladebit should. Well, he's high. Huh, sure, yeah. I mean, is, up, up, to, up to Doom Goblin, I don't want to, like, coerce his character. Yeah, m maybe it's been a while, and he's like uh, getting less high by the minute. Well, I guess Benjamin would ask if, with the spyglass, he can spot anyone on the ship. Yeah, I can try. Feel free to roll me a careful. Zero. It's a lot of fog. But you can clearly tell it's the good fortune. Ah, yes. Uh, yeah. That's the ship. That's the one. That, that's not what I asked. Yep, that's definitely good fortune. Okay. Uh, maybe we should, like, slower approach in case there's something funky going on. Why don't you look for the blade? For the blade bit? For the mm. spike glass? Blade mm. Whatever. I'll take the spyglass if Bladebeard allows me. Yeah, sure. Let's see what your elven eye see. Let me check to see if your stunt applies. I mean, I guess it's about surroundings. It's just in a grander uh, scale, I suppose. You're you're gonna have to make me look up the fucking Oxford Dictionary for surroundings. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm legit doing that, by the way, because I need to be sure. Surroundings. Things that surround you. I mean... The things and conditions around a person or thing. I don't think the good fortune counts. The How fog... far is around? <laughs> mm. And the spyglass kind of makes the further place closer so the so. circumstances conditions or objects by which one is surrounded that that's definitely not a good fortune mm. okay fair enough the place I mean, where you live and the conditions which you live no your your cap was good anyway let's give it a shot okay i got a three okay with a three um you see some signs of activity like you see like some silhouettes on the ship but fewer than there should be mm, okay hmm there's people on the ship but hmm, suspiciously less than i'd expect do you think there's i don't know some sort of cave on that rock or something mm. uh, could be I doubt they lost any crew, or hmm, maybe they did since it was a mutiny. But hmm, we should 
approach carefully, I think. Your ship is very noticeable above board. Yeah, I, I just mean, like, don't rush in. That's all. It's not really about being sneaky. But that's just the first, ma first mate's opinion. But should we maybe be the ones to make the first move? If we go carefully, they can surprise us. Well, yeah, but what if it's a trap? That's what I'm saying. I mean, why would it be a trap? They didn't expect us to come. I don't know. Maybe they spotted us. In this fog? What about before the fog? Sh sure. You're the first mate. I'm not the captain. I'm waiting for his opinion. Captain? Mm, or, sorry. What? How should we approach? Hmm. <laughs> Carefully. Okay. So, um, I think Junatun, because he's the, like, helmsman and navigator, he'd say, slow and steady then. Uh, take close, take a closer look and then make a, 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 a different judgment call. Hmm, that, that sounds good. Then, as you say, Captain, uh, First Officer, uh, I think, I think of all people, uh, Raka, the orc lady, would approach this like little command deck that you all have, and uh, ask in orcish. So I guess only Morg understands. Why? Aren't Mary you... understands too. Oh right, and Liri too, and uh, uh, she would ask, "Why aren't we proceeding?" No, we are. Well, why aren't we proceeding faster? We, we're going in carefully. This is a rescue mission. A coward's approach if I ever heard one. Okay. Jack crosses her arms, all dissatisfied, but I'm assuming you all ignore her. Yeah, and Larry can't really speak walkish well, so... Fair enough. She has nothing left to say. You continue to uh, proceed uh, as you get as the Black Grin. Um, by the way, feel free to rename the ship if you want to. Um, the White Grin. <laughs> the Black Grin continues to approach. Um, since I'm a, since I'm assuming you want to take better stock of what might be going on at the good on the Good Fortune, if anything. Uh, how are you doing so? Uh, I guess Benjamin would keep using like the spyglass to keep a, an eye on things. May I get another careful from you? Is this surroundings now or not yet? <laughs> not yet, but if you okay. but once you get closer, yes. Okay. A five. Okay. Um, it's a very good roll. Um. I will say, you notice, again, fewer people than uh, uh, are on the ship than there should be. You also notice that the ship is damaged. Uh, like you see part of the um, hole, like the bottom side at least, not the part where like Liri went all voidy, but a different one uh, is damaged seemingly from like a cannonball. And uh, that's likely why uh, they are moored on this rock. Uh, I can tell you more if you use fate points to improve your role. How much more? How much more I can tell you that I cannot say. Hmm. Mm, no, I'm not going to risk it. Very well. So you see that this ship has been in a scuffle and that's likely why it's docked on this uh, rock. And it's, uh, and it's also a, a, a possible explanation of why you don't see many people, because they, they may be below deck uh, making repairs. Mm. Okay. Seems this ship was damaged by cannon shots. Weird. Um, do we spot any ship on the way here? 
the NPCs shake their head no, because they didn't look on the way here. Hmm. Benjamin just kind of scratches his head. But shall we resume our approach? I think so. Well, it's not like they can run away. There's no need to be so hasty. Well, uh, Leary provided a dissenting opinion, so what's your consensus? Well, I don't think Leary's opinion really matters. Yeah, it's not really contradictory. I just said resume the approach. I didn't say, like, ram into the ship. Okay, so you would continue to uh, approach it carefully. I'm guessing? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Already? I feel like we're just gonna walk right into an ambush. Just <laughs> suddenly, like, the ship teleports in and just annihilates us, and now it's done. The Kulturan fleet will show up and kill us. <laughs> yeah. Rizan will appear from the mist and just push our boat with way back to Gilajo. <laughs> hmm. You approach uh, the Good Fortune uh, even more. Um, again, I would ask how you would be taking stock of what's going on on the Good Fortune. Uh, the same way, unless anyone has any different ideas. If Benjamin senses anything magical, Larry will check it out. But if not, she will stay behind and wait. I mean, I did tell the Nago lady to keep an eye out, so if there's anything magical, I assume she'll notice, I guess. Um, so if nothing else, I'll keep using the spyglass. May get a careful from you, and from now your stunt will apply. Uh, are we in range to use the like grappling hook things or not yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Please get another five. I got oh. a three. I'm making it a five. Okay. Uh, with a five. Uh, you notice more of the same things as before, uh, but as you approach, you see like the few people who were on deck. Uh, rush below deck, probably frightened to see a horde ship. Again, I can tell you more if you spend fake points. Mm, I won't. I mean, uh, Menorex not here, but I'd say we shoot the grappling hook things. Mm hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Your opinion doesn't matter, says Rocco to Blaybeard. No, I joke because there's a language barrier anyway. Uh, I'm assuming Banarak would also agree, I guess. I mean, he's not here, so I guess we just have to assume. Hmm? You shoot the grappling hooks, uh, and they latch on to the uh, good fortune, and now you are able to get up close and board it without difficulty. Let's... B -b 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 board. Mary will suggest they board. Oh, we should probably establish some ground rules. Like, we're taking prisoners. We're not out here to kill everyone. <sighs> you still don't trust me, do you? I'm not talking about you. I'm just worried about the ogres and that they'll eat everyone. You're just talking to my face, yeah. I I'm just suggesting some ground rules. Look, you're part of, like, the board of directors of this ship. So you should know this, right? True. Would it be like maybe water rules since we are not on the ground? Whatever. How about boat rules because we're on a boat? Wood rules. Metal rules. Can, can we take this a little more serious? Isn't it like your mother in danger? Yeah, yeah. All right. Ground rules. Uh, all right. Can can we get our third mate in here? Oh, um, and who's that again? Vera. Oh, oh, Vera. Uh, I'm already here. Um, do you have any experience boarding ships? I've experienced defending against borders. Well, so I guess um, that's kind of the same thing. Hmm. Uh, what's what's the best way to board a ship? 
without killing everyone. What's the worst way someone could board your ship? Well, she like points at the cannons, the like grappling hooks, which are like reeling the black grin the ship you guys are on in closer to good fortune. She well, she'd say, I suggest waiting until you know. She like claps her hands like slowly so that it doesn't even make a sound till you know the ships are together and then jumping on board I'd um, suggest you cover the cannon ports uh, so that nobody sneaks on board our ship if you're expecting something like that hmm. alright can we get um, the former captain in here in the creme I can go get her. Mm, thank you. And after a little bit, uh, Linda Krem would appear. She'd say, you need me? Yeah, um, we didn't spend a lot of time in the Good Fortune, so we were just wondering about its defensive capabilities, like how many cannons it has, you know, the sort. Uh, uh, I, I can count them on my fingers and I'd still have fingers, so not much. It's a merchant vessel. Hmm. Considering most of your crew uh, is still there, would you say they would surrender us when we board? I see an army of ogres, yeah. Uh, I would ask you not to kill people, please. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. I'd rather not have the, or the ogres board because I feel they would kill people. But seeing a ship full of ogres and some non-ogres boarding, do you think they would surrender? Can I get a flashy from you? A1. Not to you, no. Would they surrender to you? Uh, I, I never expected them to strand me, if I'm being honest. So uh, before that happened, I would have said yes. Now, probably no. I imagine they probably hate me. Yeah, they did leave us to die. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Blaybeard has a good point. Also, we are not talking about just merchants here they also have a few trolls and a bright cool well yeah but that's you know the minority i just mean like the rest of the crew because if the rest of the crew wants to surrender what's like a troll and a human with a skirt i don't know just since there was a mutiny their loyalty probably isn't too great that's what i'm assuming so i'm not sure they'd want to put their lives on the line for them Uh, if, if you think so, I, I'm here if you need me. She looks uncomfortable. Probably I like the prospect of potentially fighting her former comrades. Look, if it's not asking too much, um, and since we need, honestly, every non-ogre to board, uh, we'd appreciate you to join us and maybe you'll smooth out any negotiations that might happen are you taking um she like tries to subtly indicate raka and karu grim totem uh mm, right uh i I'd, would rather not but i I'd think she might advise, object i'd also advise not yeah i'm not sure we really have the power to stop them but we'll see what we can do this is their ship, after all, so it's in their interests that we get the other ship in the best condition possible. So... As this conversation is happening, you see that Raka rushes to the side of the Good Fortune, ready to be the first to jump aboard. Okay. She, uh, uh, she also unsheaths her axe. Uh, uh, Bladevira will join her and try to board before her. She looks at you, Blaybeard, and gives you a grin and says, do, do you speak Orcish? No. Says something in Orcish. Blaybeard will say something in Dwarvish. Or Dwarven. 
Browns. Uh, okay. Uh, this isn't going great. Uh, Buzz, can you give us a hand here? Oh, what's going on? You need to control everyone. So the idea is, we're going to board, but we're going to leave the ogres behind because they would just kill everyone, you know. So mm. we're going to board with our, you know, non-ogre mates and try not to kill the other crew and have them surrender. But, you know, we have Bladebeard and Rocket over there that are ready to kill everyone on that ship. Do you think you could mediate that? Uh, y yes, I can. Okay. Uh, get them to not want to kill everyone. Okay. But are you okay with leaving the ogres behind and not having them board the other ship? It probably smart. They probably would. Well, uh, if I'm there, they might listen. Then but... you handle those two hotheads and I'll uh, gather everyone to do the boarding. Okay. All right. Uh, good luck. You'll uh, need it. Mm. Okay. Uh, which scene shall happen first? Moarg or Benjamin? We can go with Moarg, since Benjamin's with kind of be after, sort of. Sure. Okay. You approach Captain Rocka and uh, Captain Bleybeard, who are both ready to go and board the ship as soon as the grappling hook reels it in, which is which will happen pretty quickly. I am uh, hearing oh, you two are uh, wanting some real blood. Uh, which language do you say that in? <laughs> I, I guess he would kind of like say it both, like the first one in common and the second one in orcish. Okay. Captain Rocker would say, Blood and thunder. We'll see who the true captain is today. Mm. Well, uh... Go ahead. Uh, Blavie will say, Blood and thunder. We'll see who the real captain is today. In common. <laughs> yeah, well, the plan is to rescue, not kill. That's why I'm leaving ogres behind to stay and not kill. Hmm. Do you really think that's a good idea? I'll slaughter anyone who gets in my way. Including you well, if I need to. You want your mother safe, right? Because that's, that's why we're here. Yeah, of course. That uh, way we're not bringing... Hmm. You think that the ogres would kill my mom? Well, there's always a chance. I hope not, but... Well, it, we're, we're trying not to go on a killing spree, so... We're, we're going more discreetly. What are you two? What are you two babbling about? If you seek to stick my, to steal my glory, I shall not allow you. God, oh, what your glory is? Blood and thunder. What else? The slaughter of the enemies of the war chief. Are these your enemies then? If they get in my way. Hmm. Well. uh... Not sure if these are all enemies of the Horde. I think they just uh, broken people who are listening to crazy person. Makes no difference to me. Again, she like readies her axe. Well, you can save your strength then for the person maybe who coerced this whole thing, but... Uh, I think the rest of them are just confused friends and allies. Friends who left us on an island. Oh yeah, you're speaking in Orkish, sorry. Oh, he'd, he'd interchange hmm. between both of them. So who is this person that I, must, that I must slay then? Well, I think it was... 
Bluebeard, who who is the man who uh, did all this again? I kind of forgot his name. Uh, Ziharu. Ziharu, then. Ziharu, you're, you're, you're the good fortune's first mate, okay? Yeah, he betrayed us. This is the DM, not... yeah. Alright, I'll find this Ziharu and, and his head shall be mine. Yeah, uh, I guess that's as long as you don't kill anybody else. Uh, if they don't get in my way. Including you, points her axe at you. I'm, I'm just here to help my friend get his mom back. I, uh, that, that's all we're doing here. Well, maybe his mom shouldn't have gone captured. Maybe she, she shouldn't have been weak. I mean, probably. I, I, she could probably lift some weights more. I, I don't know. She's My mom was pretty strong, as far as I remember. Well, also, all of your ogres are pretty strong, and yet they got captured by the Nexus Lord, and I had to save them. Well, we get captured a lot, so... I think everybody gets captured now and then. It's like a holiday. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so you two just kind of calm down and chill with, uh, with the killings and just, just focus on the main bad person, not, uh, not everyone. Fine, I will direct my anger at this Ziharu, but if any, do anyone gets in my way, I will not hold back. I guess that's the best we're going, Bladebeard. Uh, yeah, sure. All right, I'll go talk with my first mate then. Speaking of, Benjamin, um, because you were like, you sort of took responsibility of who will come uh, with the boarding party who shall come to with the boarding party uh basically i'm grabbing every like able-bodied non-ogre in the crew uh so let's like real brief go in order um Ogurin doesn't answer to you Krogi and brick don't answer to you your father will you bring your father no bug uh no are you going to try to bring the Kvaldir lady? Uh, if I bring... Uh, could Vera talk with her? I don't remember. Uh, barely. I'll bring her along and ask her to help, I guess. Then she will come along as well. Uh, Raka, she doesn't answer to you. What about Karu Grim Totem? Uh, I'll speak with the orc about it. Uh, the old orc, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Um, you want, do you want Karo along? Who? The Tauren. Yeah, I'll ask the the orc about it. Maybe oh, I confused that's the, the name. That's the orc saying that to you. Oh, sorry. Thought they were still in DM mode. My bad. Um, do you think I could refrain from killing anyone if possible? We're, we're trying to have the other crew surrender. <sighs> He's not a bloodthirsty type, but he's also not the talkative type. We never could figure him out. He will obey the orders of Captain Raka. Hmm, that's not very reassuring. Uh, hmm, maybe he could stay behind on the ship, I suppose. As you say. Uh, your your help would be appreciated in the boarding, anyways. Above board, uh, this would mean that he would be unable to steer the ship if need be. Uh, I mean, during the boarding, that's not really necessary. Uh, Fair enough. So, yeah, what, if, we'll what, if, what if we get attacked by another ship? We have to escape. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll bring him back, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a worthwhile risk. Sure. Uh, and you're bringing the, like, good fortune people, a.k.a. Um... Whatchamacallit. Yeah, the the granny, the Lyran, the Cram, the yeah, all of them. Including your gunner fizzle? 
Uh, no, Fizzle, we're going to leave him behind in case we need some shooting. Noted. Alrighty. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Well, I guess m in the like seconds before the two ships collide from the grappling hooks and you are ready to make your way there, uh, do you guys do or say anything? Let nope. the captain drop some words, I don't know. Also, I said uh, Gurin, uh, Krogi, and Brig don't answer to Benjamin, but they do answer to Blaybeard, but I don't know if Blaybeard will bring them along. Yeah, he would. Uh, all, all three? All of them. Okay. So how many people would that team have all together? Like, ten people to board the ship? So there's the four of you, uh, another four in the top right, Junifum that's five, um, that's, so that's nine, uh, plus the around, five four, around yeah, 14, so that makes 14. Okay, it's not as bad as I originally thought. Yeah, we'll have, we have the ogres and just both has scream for them and they'll charge, which will be a bloodbath, but it's better than everyone dying. Um, Banrak, were you going to provide an inspiring speech in the couple of seconds before the two ships collide, or? Don't be too inspiring, because I mean, the ogres will charge. <laughs> Potentially. Friends, we're going to rescue our friend of mother, or mother of friend, and we will bring her home and she will be safe, and we will do well to bring them all home if they uh, do not spill blood. So we will we will bring home our friends. Uh, I'll whisper to Vod. I think it should work on your speeches. Very impromptu, Benjamin. Mm, okay, we'll put the next one in writing beforehand. Uh, Jonathan, as a like act of kindness will say look Tarogar, sort of like encouraging Morg look tar Captain Raka also yells look tar because that's an orcish word or expression but you know so the two ships collide with a very loud uh, smashing sound the good fortune takes the worst of it because it's made of wood while the black grin is made of iron it's like very, very noticeable. Uh, Captain Rocker, and I'm assuming Captain Blaybeard uh, would rush to be the first on board, correct? Sure. I'll also uh, tell my hourglass to play some, like, uh, exciting music. Okay, I'll make a note in editing to add, quote, exciting music. <laughs> okay. You jump on board. Uh, well, I, I, I'm assuming everyone does, correct? Uh, before I do, I'll just tell Bud that as soon as he jumps in, he'll, he should demand the crew surrender. Okay, I will do that. Hmm? You, ju uh, you do jump on board. Uh, and um, again, with this loud crashing sound. Uh, and as I mentioned, because uh, like... Uh, the few people you saw on deck ran below deck. Likely because of that, there is nobody on deck to like oppose you. They probably are all below deck based on the information that you've gathered. <sighs> well, that was easy, I thought. Uh, since we're on top of the ship, does like is it just a rock or is there like a cave or something? Uh, give me a careful. At the, and your stunt will apply. I would also like a five. To Go ahead, Dungoblin. Check if anyone's like hiding somewhere above board, right? Also, give me a careful. Uh, to answer your question, Farmshire, it is a natural rock. Okay. One. You're excited. You, you don't have time to look around. All right. All right, Captain. What's next? Uh, search around. Look for anything. 
uh, up deck yeah. and below deck. Okay, but you should be the first one to walk in since you know you're the, you're captain, the captain, and you should you know. Actually, I think Rocco will rush ahead. <laughs> below no, deck. No. Um, in this ship, is there that like thing in ships where there's like. <laughs> Sorry for the cat. <laughs> Blaybeard's cat is yelling out in car. <laughs> is there like that that wooden grid that leads below deck or something like that? Uh, there's a stairwell uh, that goes below deck. So th that's the only way to go below deck? Or yes, to one, see one below stairwell. Deck. One stairwell, okay. yes. Yeah, I'll just not budge and say, yeah, you should hurry. Whoa. And... Rocco will rush he ahead at this point. Bud, do you also go? Yeah, I, I, I'd say Moorg would take a page out of Benjamin's book, start running. If you guys... I'll, 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 I'll have everyone follow, but like leave, I don't know, leave the knoll to look, uh, keep a lookout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> will do. Uh, if you guys remember, the Good Fortune had two decks below. Uh, one was more so kind of sleeping quarters, and the one be the like bottom deck was the cargo. storage, right? Yeah, and storage. The cargo. Yeah. So, uh, as you uh, actually, Mark, can I get your quick, and I'll oppose with Captain uh, Rockus to see which is quicker. Uh, yeah, I got a. F you are quicker than Captain Rocka. Okay. So, you rush below deck. Uh, you're heading, I'm guessing, to the middle deck, so to say, not to the bottom deck. All right. That's a question. Um, I guess he would. I mean. He'd race down to the bottom, not the bottom deck, but like the middle deck and see if there's anything there. And then I guess go to the bottom if there was nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, go to what is like the middle deck. And at first you see nothing, but of course there could be very, like, you can't see everything from where you're at. You'd have to like go further in to see more clearly. Do you do so or do you proceed to the bottom? Um, he's gonna he's gonna look around. Okay. Uh, Rocco will rush below deck above board. Uh, while you search this deck, sort of like splitting the responsibility. May I get a careful a careful from you. Yeah. A zero. I got a zero. <laughs> you saw. Oh, while, while Bud looks, uh, sorry. Um, while Bud looks around, do I hear any battling downstairs or anything like that? Give, well, give me a careful, and and your stunt will apply. But with uh, seven, oh wow. <laughs> okay, Morg with that roll with the roll of zero. I'm sort of imagining that you're doing the like cartoon thing where like Morg's like lifting up a barrel, like oh, is someone underneath the barrel? And if, obviously there wouldn't be, but he's doing it anyway. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll take that. With a seven, Benjamin. Um, Like, your instinct says that something's wrong. There should be, again, more people. And as you also begin going down the stairs, even if you don't reach the bottom decks yet, you get the... you don't hear anything or anyone from the, like, middle deck. You hear Raka rushing to the bottom deck. Uh, and you also hear, like, some whispers from uh, the bottom deck. Like whispers whispers or spooky whispers? Not like Leary's Void Whispers or whatever, just like the whispers of a normal person, so to say. This is scary, okay. Uh, so I catch nothing from this level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get like, well, Bud is like lifting up crates and looking underneath them. Um, you can quite quickly tell that there's nobody here. On like, uh, uh, assuming, and assuming... Can Larry sense? Sorry, can Larry sense anything about magic to maybe help Benjamin out in this situation? Give me a careful. Okay. 
a minus two. This this place brings back bad memories for you, Liri. Yeah, that makes sense. So, assuming that none of the crew died in whatever attack happened, would all of them fit in the bottom deck? Yes, they would fit. Yes. It wouldn't be comfortable, but they would fit. So it would be overcrowded? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. And why would they do that? Um, yeah, it's pretty unusual. Something's very wrong, but I I'm not sure I like it. Something's not quite right. Right. Larry, um, Larry will, I guess, sneakily try to, like, position herself somewhere in the, um, like, stairwell, so that if anyone jumps out, she can get a, a hit in on them, just to kind of back up Benjamin and, like, mm -hmm. and... Does no one have one of those spike glasses that has, like, a, a 90 degree, like, bend? <laughs> 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 I mean, if if I like bend try to bend it hands. hard enough, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Grin could. Uh, I will say Benjamin because you got a very good careful roll. I'll give you a very, an extra piece of information. Uh, you remember that rocker rush below deck? Uh, you'd probably expect like maybe sounds of fighting or something like that, but you hear conversation. If that makes sense? Like natural conversation? Agitated conversation. Uh, but, um, like, you'd expect Rocker to be out there swinging, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, but I have a terrible idea, but you're gonna hear me out. And the conversation dies down after, like, 10 to 20 seconds. I'm gonna go down. And if I don't give a signal in 10 seconds... You all get out of here, okay? And leave? He, oh. Yeah. If you say so, but that doesn't sound so good. Why can't I just look around the corner and notice? <laughs> do you think you can do it? I'm pretty sneaky. I mean, I could try. Go for it. I'd rather not die. I'd rather you not die yet. <laughs> Mary kind of chokes on her words. Because this is very creepy. I know. Um, okay, Larry will attempt that. Larry will try sneaking down the stairs and getting a... a peek into whatever's happening unnoticed. Does she still have that stunt where she's invisible, or does she not? She does, but... Okay. I don't want to use it right now. Gotcha. Either way, may get a sneaky from you, and the other stunt where you get a plus two would apply because you were... Like you previously told me, yeah, I'm gonna like hide. So you're already. In oh, so I stuff. get so so I get a plus four. Uh, well, um, plus four. Let me see. Because I'm attempting to. Oh no, it's it's attempting to stay hidden. It's the same uh, stunt. I'm talking it's... about your fiendish aura stunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it doesn't stack. Mm -hmm. So yes, you, you, it is a, it is just a plus two because you previously yeah. established that you're going into quote unquote mm -hmm. stealth. Yeah, I was confused if it was an advantage or not. I get you. Uh, let um, me, let me, six. Let me check to see... Uh, someone's careful. Uh, I should have had this ready beforehand. I apologize about that. And I hate the fact that I call things by either the title or the name like I was looking. Okay, that's there. Careful. Okay. That's a bad sneaky for me. I, I, six is fine, but it's below average. Well, oh, phew, they did horribly. I mean, they weren't... Anyway, you go down... You, like, sneak downstairs. Um, not the sneakiest you've been, but sneaky enough. Uh, you succeed with style. And you see uh, Captain Rocker, weapon unsheathed. She seems to be, like, waiting, like... Presumably for the rest of you all to get down. Feel free to like roll me a, a careful to like intuit her intention. A minus two. Uh, she has. A, uh, she has. Oh, I looked at the wrong thing. Give me a second to see her sneaky. <laughs> She has a sneaky of two, so if she critically fails, you will succeed. But let's see. 
Imagine if that happened somehow. Nope, a two. Unless uh, so you want to reroll. No, I don't want to reroll. Yeah, you aren't really able to tell what's going on. She seems to be waiting for you guys so that you all can proceed further in. Okay, Nuri will sneak back. But is there anyone there, or is it just Raka? From what Liri can see, like from where she is on the stairs, unless Zoro and you were going further in the bottom deck, uh, that's all you see. I think that's enough information to kind of relay back to, you know, the others, just in case. Nuri will return and say that Raka is just standing there in the bottom of the ship. I'm not doing anything. Do we proceed, Captain? Uh, yes. It's okay. Okay. Is the hourglass still playing quote unquote epic music? Uh, I should probably turn it off, right? Is anyone going to tell him to? I guess Blade will tell it to stop. Okay, then let me make a note for editing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Blade bit self-aware enough to realize that it's probably a bad idea. Okay, uh, if you proceed downstairs, who goes first? Uh, yeah, sure. Benjamin will follow right it's behind. Not, it's not like we can do this sneakily when Bud's coming down with us. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Rock is already downstairs, so we're not being sneaky anymore. Yeah. I guess Moorg would go first. He's got his cannon ready. Hmm. So, Moorg, you go first. Uh, Captain Raka says in, or in Orkish, there's the dwarf woman, uh, she's over there, she like points to an alcove, not many other people. Well, no, she, let me rephrase, mm. let me rephrase that. She would say, didn't see anyone else. What? Ah, oh, sorry, I can speak Orkish. <laughs> Never mind. I, I mean, they'll st still say what, because where's everyone else? Well, does anyone bother to translate, I guess? Well, never mind. I probably Moarg would, you know, he'd point it out also, but like, yeah, he helped Benjamin. We just saw people come, come, descend the deck. Where's everyone? She shrugs, like, what do you want me to tell you? She doesn't understand what you mean. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I think she would still. I think she would still shrug. Like, what do you want me to tell you? Because she, oh, detects, she detects your like confusion. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, can I like try to see if there's like any traces of anything magical here, and also nudge Bladebeard to go check on his mom. Uh, sure. Give me a careful your. Does your stunt apply for magic stuff? I think. I it's mean, so. surroundings, magic, maybe. I say so. Yeah, sure. I agree. Uh, I got a seven. Oh, uh, magic. Yeah, there is some magic here. It's a kind you've never sensed before. It feels kind of primal, and uh, but. Again, it's something you haven't, uh, you've never sensed before. It feels like. Again, very, very primal, very it's primitive. Hmm? It's a reddit crowd. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> so, automatically, it's not that. Um, hmm, how should I describe it? Feels raw, earthy. Earthy, like elemental? Mm, not quite. Like, it's subtly different from, like, what you'd get from, like, Karu or Nuresh, for instance. Hmm. You get and this... It, you get, it, you, uh, I'll, get, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint, because you got a very good role. The first word that comes to you when you feel this, like, new and unusual magic is... Blood. Blood. 
it's the blood trolls. I knew it. No, but uh, like, is it just in the air? Is it like a specific comes spot? From, comes from that alcove that Raka indicated. Sorry, remind me what an alcove is. Uh, like uh, a small room, let's say. A small, just from that a room. A small room, but without a door, let's say. A small. But do do we see inside from here or not? Uh, no, you'd have to like peer and go. My, I, ba my bad for not being clear. I very slowly approach and kind of motion for the others to wait. Mary will remain hiding behind Bud. Uh, Morg. I'll, just... I'll I'll also unsheathe my sword just in case. Uh, Rock. Or just kind of. Go ahead. I was gonna say, Moore just kind of leans on his cannon, setting it down and like, waiting. Uh, I'll just look around. What about your Do mom? See, like, Are you anything? forgetting about your mom? What? Aren't you forgetting about your mom? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's in a room, but it's kind of suspicious. Could be a, a trap. What, wait, is Blaybeard's mom? in the room or like in the room we are currently in uh she uh, Raka indicated that she is in the room that benjamin felt the weird magic from oh okay okay i didn't get that i thought oh, we could my, see my bad for not being clear my bad okay okay no problem then we don't see his mom yet not yet yeah okay 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 do we see any like uh uh food or give, around give me here? careful give me careful Minus one. <laughs> uh, what can I? What can I tell you? Your mom's. Your mom's right there. Might as well get this over with. That's what you're thinking. Hmm. Yeah. All right. I'll like follow Benjamin. Okay. Uh, Raka would like to proceed ahead of you guys again. So uh, go ahead. I'll I'll try to motion for her to stand her ground. Says something in Orkish, uh, Moag and Liri, you um, get that she's saying, you don't get to order me around, lover. Not yet, anyway. Okay, or we're trying to uncheck. Okay. Mm. I'm curious what Zorin was going to say. I, I was going to say Liri would not translate it, but then... <laughs> but say something, please. Something. Benjamin just face bombs. Oh, you mean? Oh, okay. I've been doing a lot of translating, so you know. Um. W wait up. Uh, he uh he wants you to wait. <sighs> she like grumbles, but uh, like. Grumbles like fine. I wait. Or kind of just nods, thankful. Hmm? So, do Benjamin followed by Blaybeard proceed then? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Let me check something first. I need to uh, check. Uh, Two things. First of all, I'm really sorry. I should have organized my notes better. Uh... They find the clubs. What blood are. magic? Yeah, blood trolls aside. Another thing that came to mind is the mogu. Yeah, Taishan too. Well, they're like anima, but not anima from the Shadowlands. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's that. And I need to make another note. Just give me a second. Oh, a, a battle between ogres and mogul. We never saw that in WoW. Potentially. Potentially. Uh, so, 